Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Battle series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spotlight I'm playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2017 season. So, how is everyone? If you want to have a great Wednesday, we've got a couple of great episodes today coming up for you with The School of Hard Knocks right now, and then in about an hour and a half's time, we'll have our QR code episode for this week. So, I've got a very very cool team lined up for this QR code series this week and um, so do stay tuned for that if you've got any suggestions for future and um, weeks coming up on our QR code series and um, do get you your suggestions in because I am making a list of things and we will get through those so if you've got any suggestions guys do get them in and we will get them on the channel for you so we kicked off the week with a few changes to the Salazzle team that we started running last week. We replaced the Salazzle with Incineroar and the Alola Ninetales with Scissor as well. So we tried to kind of feature Scissor on Monday's episode. It didn't work out too well. We got really caught up by that Buzzwall um, being choice banded, which I imagine it probably was. Um, but interestingly enough, we had a comment on the on the video from Monday saying that, you know, that the player there was, um, I think the wrong player there was going for the Murkrow turn one and that's totally right like looking back at the match like what we should have done in that situation was sword stance up with scissor which was for free we knew the tailwind was kind of coming out at that point and we should have just targeted down the the buzz wall i shouldn't have been so scared at that point of wasting his e-move into a potential protect because at the end of the day we were covering um the scissor no matter what happened in that situation and it was a safer player to me to make in that situation. So I think the battle would have turned out a lot differently if um, we'd made that play. And although in the episode itself, I do say I got caught out a little bit by the, the choice band on the buzzwall and the damage that it was doing. I think at the same time, if we kind of just um, covered ourselves in that first turn, it would have made you know a, a massive difference to the, the end game of that, that match. Because the, the, we my opponent loses a buzzwall at that point then you know they lose so much momentum in taking advantage of the trick room by getting rid of the Murkrow we kind of allowed the Tapu Lele to come in that next turn with like three turns of Tailwind ready to go so there's a Buzzwall sitting there and a Tapu Lele so it made it super difficult so we did all right I think in the end kind of pulling it back but the main point was we're just not really concisely thinking about um, the threats of making the safer play in what we are playing in a best of three format as well so I'm um, sorry a best of one format which makes it completely different to a best of three set so hopefully we can kind of just think about things a bit more today and um, in today's episode and um, obviously I want to feature the the scissor um, and highlight what it can do um, but at the same time I don't want to just be making silly plays and just throwing games away I want to be showing you guys how to kind of really go around and making the better plays, making the better decisions, and that's what this is all about. You know, a lot of the time I do say I made a mistake. Hopefully this is something you guys can learn from and not do yourselves and explain it a little bit, but at the same time I want to be making the good plays so you guys can be like, ah, oh, he did that, that's why Ah, I'll do that as well. So that's the other thing. We want to kind of be promoting um, just better play and better thinking and logic behind what we're doing anyway. So let's see if we can do it here. Not jinx ourselves today because we have our first opponent of the day and they are running a team of Tapu Lele, Feramasa, Alolan Raichu, Alola, uh, Alolan Tapu Koko. Of course it's Alolan Tapu Koko. Celestealer and Arcanine. So what are we going to do? We've got that electric core there. Um, between the, the Raichu, Tapu Koko, we've got another really offensive call with the Tapu Lele and the Feramasa. Obviously Tapu Lele getting its psychic terrain up to prevent any fake outs or anything like that into the Feramasa. Um, and then we've got Celesteela and Arcanine just as the kind of glue that's going to stick this team together. So what we're going to do, Trick Room here is going to be very good. Um, we do need to keep our options open though, so we've got ways to get around things like Celesteela, which can be pretty annoying um, to the majority of the team. Uh, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hmm. <sighs> I could lead. I could lead. Hmm. 
I've not got much time either, so let's think. Let's go Tapu Fini and Incineroar. Let's go Porygon 2 and hmm, let's go Mudsdale here. Mudsdale's gonna obviously be very good. Hits the Arcanine, Tapu Koko, Raichu for really good damage. Um, if you can get a Trick Room up, it's able to hit the Tapu Lele for really good damage. Um, I think we're going to have to preserve the Incineroar because we haven't brought the Tapu Koko for that Celesteela if my opponent decides to bring it. Um, but we've also got to be really careful with that um, Ferramasa because it can put a lot of pressure on and uh, really threaten what we've got. So let's see. My opponent leads off with Raichu and Ferramasa. So the Raichu is instantly going to be the faster fake out on the field. So Incineroar... Could go for a fake out into the Feromosa, but there's every chance we could get faked out ourselves. Feromosa could have um, the Poisonium uh, Z, Poison Jab, which would threaten the type of Lele, uh, Finny, so we don't really want to lose that straight away because it's our only terrain set that we've brought with us. I am going to make a bit of a risky call and switch in my Porygon 2 for my type of Finny. I can't imagine any fighting type attacks coming out onto that slot. And I am just gonna go for a fake out into the Pheromile. So just in case the Raichu decides to fake out the Finny. But we do not see that. We see Tapalele make its way onto the field. And it will get that Psychic Terrain up. <coughs> so we do a withdrawal Tapu Finny. We get Porygon 2 in. So it should be able to take any attacks from that Raichu potentially come out. We're not going to see a fake out. Probably going to see an attack into that slot. Thunderbolt, potentially. And we do just see a Thunderbolt. But it's into the Incineroar. We are able to take that though, so that's not too bad. Now the thing is here, we've got to be careful because what do we get a boost in with Porygon 2? So it was attack, so that's not too bad. Um, we could go for a Trick Room here, but we've got to also be aware that the Tapu Lele could carry Taunt. Hmm. So it's whether we want to go for, like it's probably worth going for the, the Trick Room just in case we can't get the Taunt off, to be honest. So I am just going to go for it. Um, like at the, the risk of losing a turn, I'd rather do that. And I think, hmm, we're not going to see a Psychic come out into that Incineroar slot. So we're pretty safe just switching in Mudsdale here. And if a Thunderbolt comes out onto that Incineroar again from the Raichu, at least will be immune to it, so let's see what my opponent goes for. So no taunt. Do see a psychic onto Porygon 2. And here is a shattered psyche from the Raichu. I don't know if this will be enough to take down the Porygon 2 though. Because I know even a Tapu Lele needs to normally get a psychic off and then this the shattered psyche to KO Porygon 2. Um so I don't know if this is gonna be enough. I don't think it is. But I could be proved wrong. I am proved very wrong. I do eat my words. Okay. So that is a bit of a shame. Um, we lose our speed control. Hmm. What are we going to do? I think we've got to bring in Tapu Fini here. Just to get rid of the psychic terrain. So we could swagger into, hmm, like I could swagger into Mudsdale here, or I could just Muddy Water, or I could protect with Tapu Fini expecting a, an electric type attack in from the, the Raichu. Um, I think here, we're probably going to see the Raichu switch out into probably, if my opponent's brought at the Celesteela. So I'm probably better off while I have the opportunity going for her. I'm going to go for Muddy Water because the accuracy drops are always really handy here. Um, and I'm just going to heavy slam into that Tapu Lele slot. So there's the Raichu withdrawn, like we thought. And there's that Celesteela. And just a Psychic from the Tapu Lele into the Mudsdale. So we are able to take that quite nicely. We will get the stamina boost as well, which will help us if that Feromosa does come back in. Oh, but 
Like good old Money Water always does, it does miss a Tapulele. And we don't get any accuracy drops this time around on the Celesteer. We do get the heavy slam off. Um, but we do pick a K up straight up onto that Tapulele, which is nice. So we me it means that at least we're not going to have to deal with the Psychic Terrain anymore. So when Incineroar does come back onto the field, we will be able to take advantage of that. Um, fake out, which is right you can do now. Um, hmm. I think this turn, actually, I'm going to go for a heal pulse into the Mudsdale and I'm going to go for a, I'm just going to go for a high horse part into the Raichu. We'll probably see a fake out into the Mudsdale. There we are, but at the end of the day, this is just helping us because we'll get that stamina boost again. So it means we're able to take any high jump kicks or anything like that from the Ferramasa. So we do get the heal pulse off with Tepu Fini. We see a leech seed come out and it is into the Mudsdale. But we're still not in a bad, bad position. Like we need to just make sure that our last Pokemon that we've got against that Celesteela is the Incineroar. So here, I'm just going to go for, hmm, should I go for the Swagger at this point or not? I don't know if I really need to. I'm just going to go for Muddy Water, try and get some chip onto that Celesteela. Hmm. And a high horsepower into the Raichu, really. Yeah, I mean, we see an Encore into the mud still so it's going to lock us into a uh, heavy slam which isn't ideal Ugh, muddy water missing the raichu we really need an accuracy drop here this would be super handy no accuracy drop and celestia gets a leech seed off onto the finny and we're just going to get heavy slam and it targets so i'll almost just lock into the last well, I don't know, because I did, definitely didn't target the Celesteela that turn, so that's a bit strange. Hmm. Huh. I think it might have to get... Yeah, I'm going to have to withdraw Mudsdale at this point. I feel like I can't really get anywhere. Um, so I'm going to protect... Finny because I feel like the Raichu probably will go for a Thunderbolt into that slot this turn. I'm just going to bring in Incineroar on Mudsdale. Because I can imagine my opponent probably doubling into that Tapu Finny slot here. And then the next turn my opponent's drawn to go for that Encore really into that Tapu Finny slot. I would say, because of the Protect. Yeah, so there we go. So we can switch in the Mudsdale quite freely on this next this next turn. But the thing is, we don't want to go for a... Um, we definitely do not want to go for a Fake Out. And that, um, because we'll just get Encored into it the next turn. So I think that the best thing to do is go for a Dog... Darkest Lariat into that Raichu. Hopefully that should be enough to pick up the KO there. <clears throat> and the Celesteel will probably protect, I would imagine, as well. So no protect coming out. You just see a Thunderbolt come out onto the Incineroar. <sighs> Critical hit. It's not good, but it does proc our berry. Okay, so... Do get away with it a little bit. And we see a Leech Seed come out into the Incineroar. Hmm. Darkest Larry. We need this to pick up the kill, really, ideally. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. I'm going to lose a little bit of Leech Seed damage on the Incineroar to Celesteela. Like I say, I need to prioritise keeping the um, Incineroar around. Right until the last minute. And we see the, the Pheromiles that hit the field. So, I'd imagine I'd probably go for an Ice Beam into the Mudsdale. Heavy Slam should be enough to pick up the KO there. 
And I'll just switch the Incineroar out into Tapu Fini. The thing is, the Pheromosa might be sashed as well. It will not be great. But hopefully it targets down the Incineroar here with it. Like a high jump kick would be ideal. So it means at least Mudsdale's getting like a, a bit of a free ride this turn, but we'll see. We just see the Pheromosa go for the Protect. We'll see a Leech Seed. Oh, but we get lucky. The Mudsdale avoids the Leech Seed, so that's super nice. Right. <clears throat> so I think this turn, what I'll do is go for a Heavy Slam into the Pheromosa. I'm going to just go for... Hmm, Muddy Water's been a bit shaky with accuracy, to be honest. Um, hmm. Like, I want to go for a Muddy Water just in case it's Sash, but I feel like if I go for the Muddy Water, it's going to just miss. <laughs> We're not going to get anything out of the turn. But it's got to hit at some point, right? It's got to hit at some point. You can't keep missing that, that same target, so I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to lock into it. So there's a high jump kick. Mudsdale avoids. Oh, that is unfortunate. I don't think that would have KO'd anyway, unless it's like Life Orb, Ferramasa. We do connect with the Muddy Water. Does hit this target this time, takes down the Ferramasa. So that's that's pretty nice. We see the Leech Seed come out from the Celesteela. So I think we're gonna be all right now. We'll get a heavy slam off. It's not gonna do too much damage. But what we can do now, we can just try and wear down the Celesteela. I'm going to just swagger my Mudsdale now um, and just close combat the Celesteela. Because a couple of swaggers, while we still got the terrain up, should be enough to allow us to kind of pick up the kill there. So, I don't know if my opponent will play this out, but there's no reason not to. I mean, Celesteela is one of those Pokemon that can kind of go up against a lot of opponents can still come out on top, so we do get the swagger off, we do hit. Mudsdale kicking out as its attack raises. Um, so we just see a, a leech seed, it does fail, we get the close combat off. Plus two, doing huge damage. And another one of them is going to be more than enough to take down this Celesteela. Especially if we get another swagger off, that should seal the deal. And Incineroar can sit happy in the back. Let's see. I wonder if my opponent might just protect the Celesteela this next turn to get some health back. I think they probably will. So I'm just going to go for the... predict that. Go for the close combat and I'm going to switch out Tapu Fini into Incineroar to prevent any additional Leech Seed damage. And then we've got the Fake out the next turn as well. So no Protect. We just see the Leech Seed come out. But it should be in range now, I think, from the damage we did last turn. Yeah. So, we are able to wrap things up. So, good game to my opponent. Not too bad. Especially after losing the Porygon 2 so early on. Um, but, in hindsight, we lost the Porygon 2, but my opponent lost its the potential to get the Z-move. I was actually really surprised at that Shattered Psyche from that range. I guess the Psychic Terrain was up, but still. Um, it was surprising, but never mind. Maybe I've mis EV'd my Porygon 2. I don't think so, though. But Raichu with that terrain is pretty powerful. But we'll take that win, it was pretty good. We kind of managed to control things after that little bit of a slip early on. So it wasn't too bad. So hopefully we find our next opponent pretty quickly. Get into our next game. And as, as I speak, we find our next opponent. So we've got Zio from Spain, I think. Running a team of Tapulele, Driftblim, Garchomp, Tapicoco, Melotic, and Cartona. So, right, we've got Tapulele, Driftblim, call with that... Uh, Garchomp, so we are probably going to see Trick Tailwind for sure. My opponent doesn't really have too much for Trick Room though, um, which is interesting. So if we can get the Trick Room up, we'll be in not too bad a position. Um, Incineroar here is going to be really good, especially with the Mudsdale as well. I think the Tapu Koko threatens everything pretty hard. Um, <clears throat> 
but we might need Tapu Koko just for the Cortana, the Melotic. Um, hmm. So let's lead, let's lead, let's lead. What do I want to lead? Hmm. Let's lead Incineroar and let's lead Porygon 2. Um, hmm. I'm going to bring Mudsdale and. Do I want Finny or Coco? I think Coco is probably the better choice here, but. Um, Finny might be good just for the heal pulse and the swagger abuse that we can kind of put on. And just for the slower terrain as well, like at most points in the game. And it's a good switch in to anything Melotic's kind of thrown about and it prevents like Skull Burns and stuff. So I'm gonna go with that. We'll see if it's the right decision or not. We're gonna be banking a lot on getting the Trick Room up though, so we need to kind of make sure we don't lose Porygon 2 so easily like we did in that last match. So my opponent leading off with Cortana and Tapu Lele. Hmm. Okay. So my opponent has, what do we get download boost? We get the special attack boost, okay. So my opponent has a couple of options here. We can double into either one or two targets, because we can't get a fake out off, um, really. <clears throat> They can Moonblast and Sacred Sword into Incineroar and try and take it down that way, or they can double into the P2 with like a Shattered Psyche and a Sacred Sword. Or probably just a Psychic and a Sacred Sword. Um, hmm. I'd say the Incineroar is probably. I don't know. Let's switch. Let's go for the. Let's go for the Flare Blitz into Cortana and switch up P2 into Tapu Fini here. Because at least we'll be getting rid of the Psychic Terrain for later in the game. Especially if the Driftblim wants to come in. Cortana goes for the Sacred Sword. It is into the Fini though, so that's fine. Don't mind that. And a Psychic, yeah, so doubling into that Porygon 2 slot. So we will get the Flare Blitz off, which is pretty nice. We do take a massive bit of damage to Tapu Fini, which is a bit unfortunate, but let's see if this is a Sashed Cartana. It is. What do we want to do here? Tapu Fini is obviously Leaf Blade bit, but does the Cortana really want to stay and just go down? Um, I don't know if it would. I'm kind of tempted to go for a Dark Lariat into that slot. Uh, expecting like the Melotic to kind of come in there. And I think I might just do that and I'm just going to muddy water at the same time because if we lose the Finny at this point, I just feel like, yeah, we're going to see a Sacred Sword, so we'll see probably a double end to the Incineroar. Wow, okay, that is not cool. I did not expect it to actually do that much damage. We're in a bit of trouble now because this Psychic probably will. Ugh. Okay, massive cock up. I really need to learn the calcs on Incineroar. Um, we're in a big, big bolt of trouble here. <laughs> yeah. Things are not looking great. This might be a short, short, short match. You're definitely going to see the Porygon 2 get doubled into here. Um, hmm. We can't protect the Mudsdale. Like my opponent could just leaf blade into the Mudsdale to be honest and then things are pretty, pretty bad. I'm just going to trick room and I'm going to go for a rock slide just to get that Sash and Cortana if it doesn't yet yeah, leaf blade in. So there we go. Mudsdale is going to go down. Hmm. 
critical hit did not matter. I need to do the calculation on the um, the incinero there. I feel so dumb, like just sitting in front of it, allowing it to do it. Um, and this is a good lesson for you guys. Like, make sure that if you're using something new, you kind of know all your like, especially for like the standard stuff, like. Um, Like Cortana, like it's so, it's used all the time, so like you need to know like your calcs and stuff with it. We're just gonna see the Cortana protect here, I've kind of, yeah, just playing into my opponent's hands, it doesn't really have to do too much uh, in Cineral. Let's see what we're gonna do for, um, okay. So our Sacred Sword does like, hmm, I think it must have been a roll. Because what are we? 252, 36. Yeah, so yeah, it's 68 to 81%, so it was definitely a roll. Um, I don't know if I can even come back in this match, to be honest. I need to recover now. I should have recovered last turn. But yeah, anyway. Oh, cut on a gun for the double protect. Excellent. And my opponent going to just win the game with the Lele here, so. That is a bit embarrassing. It was a low, it was a, a, a roll, whatever happened there. But the thing is, um, if I'd known that calculation prior to that turn, I could have prepared for it a little bit better. So that's the thing, that's the importance with knowing your calcs. Um, so good game to my opponent. Um, and there's nothing more there than just, um, well, the knowledge, that's, that's what it is, really, just, you know being way overconfident with what you think because you've got to think in Incinero is still weak to dark, uh, to fighting type attacks it is a dark type Pokemon um, it doesn't resist them or anything like that we'll go on to another game because that was just a disaster I feel like um, I'm like totally not happy with that um, but it's so important that you know like rough calculations you don't need to know them like dead on you just need to know kind of in and around the area, if it's going to be close, if it's going to be, um, if you can survive it or not, things like that. Um, and you know what, like it might even work out that we look at reworking the Incineroar um, spread to better suit what we kind of want it to, to operate like. Um, so we might even look at doing that. We could even do it after the end of this episode, after this video. Let's have a look. But So we've got our next opponent anyway, and they are running a team of Porygon Z, Murkrow, Arcanine, Tapu Lele, Cortana, and Giglith. Um, hmm. Right, well, we've got, obviously, the, the two forms of speed control, the first two Pokemon there. We've got Porygon Z that has access to the Trick Room. It can also use Conversion. Uh, we've got Tailwind with the Murkrow. Uh, Intimidate support with that Arcanine. Um, Cortana Lele again. We're gonna have to be careful of this time around, and obviously the Gigalith, which is a trick room mode. But I think because we've got the inclusion of uh, Mudsdale in the team, I don't feel like my opponent would go with a trick room mode and maybe go more towards um, the Tailwind mod here. So, let's see what we can do. Um, I could lead Tapu Koko. I do want to bring Tapu Koko here. I feel Tapu Koko, Scissor. I'm gonna bring. Um, I am gonna bring Mudsdale, and I think I might bring Tapu Finny. Hmm. Although then we've not got anything for the. I want Tapu Finny. I do. I want Incineroar. Maybe Incineroar. Let's bring Incineroar to this one. If it ended up bringing the Finny there, it would have had two things in the back that I couldn't have switched in safely or in on. Um, Cortana, really. More specifically, like the leaf blades. So, we don't want to get ourselves into a situation where we've got nothing to switch in. So, we see my opponent lead off with the Porygon Z and the Cortana. So, what are we going to do here? Let's think. Could Volt switch into the Porygon Z and Bullet Punch it? That's not like a bad play at all. We've got to be aware of the protect there. Um, and then bring in Incineroar. I think that's what we should do, really, to be honest. Let's go for the Volt Switch into the Porygon Z. Hmm. 
To be honest, I could probably get away with not... Ah, oh, no, Bullet Punch is probably going to do enough so the Volt Switch will pick up the KO, to be honest. So I am just going to make that play. Because we'll get the, the attacks off before it gets a conversion boost if it does decide to go for that. So, mm, maybe not. Maybe not after an Intimidate. But it won't affect the Volt Switch damage, so we'll see. Do you see the Arcanine come in for that Cortana though? You do get a bullet punch off. Do about 40% damage, which isn't too bad. I don't think this is going to be enough though, is it? No, not quite. But, you can bring in Incineroar here. And we'll see what this Porygon 2 goes for. Probably gone for a conversion. Here we are. Break neck blitz. It's not a conversion, I don't think. <laughs> oh dear. It's into the Incineroar, so we will lose Incineroar. Oh wow, Incineroar actually takes that. That is insane. Okay. We take that all day long. Um, so I'm just gonna go fake out into Arcanine, and I'm gonna go for a... The Porygon Z has to. Um, it has to protect here, right? Like, hmm, may, may not. Ooh. But you, you would imagine it has to protect. Because I could bring in Tapu Koko on that slot, which might not be a bad idea. Um, let's do that. Let's bring in Koko. On the scissor slot. Yeah, so it switches out. Tapu Lele comes in. To try and stop our fake out. But we switch scissor out and bring Tapu Koko in. So we are going to get our terrain back up. And we get the fake out off onto the Arcanine. Do a decent amount of chip. And now, an interesting thing that I have got with this type of Coco, it is a modest type of Coco. And I change it to modest because with a minus one bullet punch onto an Arcanine and then the Gigavolt Havoc into the Arcanine, it's always a guaranteed KO and even like the bulkiest, careful, natured Arcanine. So that was like a guaranteed thing. So the fake out here kind of provides the little bit of chip that we need to guarantee that. Um, what I'm going to do is switch out Incineroar back into Scissor um, and I'm just going to go for that Gigavolt Havoc into the Arcanine. Hope it doesn't protect here. Because hmm. we could also go for the KO into the Lele potentially, but let's lock in with the Arcanine before time runs out. So we're going to switch it out into Scissor. Tepu Lele goes for the Moonblast. Is it into the Incineroar? It is. Excellent. We do reveal as well that it's Scarfed, Tapu Lele. Do take a special attack drop. Um, but we are going to get this Gigavolt Havoc off onto the Arcanine. And this should pick up the KO. If it doesn't, like, it's the lowest of low rolls in the, the whole history of low rolls. Depending, obviously, if this Arcanine's super bulky, because it might not be as well. We do get the Gigavolt Havoc off. Bye bye, Arcanine. Bye bye. So we do get that. So that's nice. We get rid of that. We also preserve our Incineroar in the back for the Cartana. And we've got access to Bullet Punch now with that Tapu Lele out on the field. So that's pretty nice. We threaten a, a one hit KO now because we're not. We've not got any Intimidate pressure coming on to us. Um, and we see the Porygon Two, Porygon Z come back in. But we know we're quite safe here, just going for the bullet punch with scissor onto the Lele and <clears throat> just going for a Volt Switch into the Porygon Z, to be honest. 
And what my opponent could do is switch out the Lele into the Cartana. Yeah, which we're going to see, but we're covering ourselves with the Volt Switch here, so... I'm a break in a potential Sash. No Protect coming out for my opponent, so we make a potential Sash on the Cartana. We take a bit of chip damage, we get the Volt Switch. We should pick up the KO onto the Porygon Z, but we do... And I'll bring in Incineroar. And now all we need to do, because we've not scarfed Tapu Lele, it, can't, it probably won't have Protect, it definitely shouldn't have Protect. So we can just switch out Incineroar, Bullet Punch into that slot, get Tapu Koko in, um, and then we've got enough between the four Pokemon, or three Pokemon we'll have left after this turn, to get rid of the Kartana. So, yeah, we'll just go for that, we'll lock in with a Bullet Punch, not on to Kartana though, we do not want to do that. And we'll switch out Incineroar into Coco. Get the terrain back in our favour. And we should be able to lock the game up. So there goes Incineroar. Coco coming back in. We'll get that electric terrain back up, overwrite the psychic terrain that the Tapu Lele's just put out. And we get the bullet punch off onto the Lele. Do pick up the kill. And we see a sacred sword into the Coco. So that's kind of sealed the game up for us here now. Because we can just. Bullet Punch and go for a Nature Power, which will turn it into a Thunderbolt under the Electric Terrain, and that should be enough by itself to pick up the KO, and my opponent just forfeits. So, very good game to my opponent. Um, That's a lot better, wasn't it? A lot better. Like, the first game, I feel like we controlled everything really well, played really well. Um... Lost the Porygon 2, which is a bit unfortunate in that first game. Second game was just a disaster. And like I said, it's just down to knowing the calculations on the Pokemon. I'm definitely going to go away and have a, like, reevaluate the Incineroar. Because, to be honest, when I put it in the team, there's a few cards I did. I didn't really do. I normally try to be as an ex like, got into as depth, like, as much depth as possible with my EV spreads when I'm doing them to kind of cover. So, it's like, not only so the Pokemon can operate how I want it to. It's more so my knowledge base of that Pokemon. I know what um, attacks it can survive. I know what roughly attacks are doing what to it. Like I know with the scissor, I know an electric terrain from a type of Coco, um, a life orb thunderbolt in electric terrain is, is gonna be maximum damage, like 98% damage. And that's just off the top of my head. And that's just from doing the calcs with scissor. I know for a fact that I can pretty much kill any Tapu Lele, um, with like, I don't know, like 164 health in up to like, uh, I don't know, like 72 defense EVs or something like that. I know I can KO 100% with a life orb with bullet punch as long as I'm not intimidated. So it's just things like that that I, you kind of want to be aware of. It makes you way more comfortable making decisions in game. And as we saw in game two, not knowing them really costs you and it's like, it's annoying when it's against something so standard like a Cartana and it makes you feel a bit like, uh, how did I miss that? But it's okay. At the same time, it's all right because you're doing it in practice. So this is the thing, like this is why the practice element of your team building process is always like the important bit. You catch these things now and then when you take your team into a tournament, you're all way more comfortable. And that's always the argument about playing um, something you're way more comfortable with in a tournament setting than playing something that's just off the, the cuff that you've made the night before because, you know, we'll have all done it and we'll probably all do it at some point. We'll have this crazy idea the night before a big tournament. Your nerves are a bit shaky, you want to do well, and you think, oh, why don't I use this? And sometimes it's a good call. Sometimes um, you can use 
Pokemon that you're familiar with, especially later in the season if you've played with them before. But sometimes it's a terrible situation, like it's a terrible decision because you're not comfortable with any of the Pokemon that you're potentially using. You haven't extensively had the time to test the EV spreads, this like the sets that you're using and things like that. And you're not comfortable with the damage calculations against the entire team. And you like doing it the night before, this is why I'm using this example, is you just don't have the time to cram in that much information and retain it between like 10 o'clock the night before, get enough sleep, create the team, and then go rock up to the tournament the next day and uh, do well. You know, we have seen it done, so it's not impossible. I'm just kind of pushing out the point that it's probably a better idea to get better tournament results, to be a bit more familiar with what you're using. And it's so important to know the, the rough estimated calculations of the damage um, that you're gonna take on Pokemon and stuff like that. So. That's just my opinion on it anyway. You know, there's probably people out there that say, nah, forget it. Just make a team like two hours before, it'll be fine. And there's evidence of proof people have done that and gone into like Reese journals and stuff and like absolutely smashed it with a team like that. So, you know, it depends who you are, but personally, that's how I would kind of look at it. And I always think like the more comfortable you are with the team and um, the better you kind of feel about your players in, in, in a match and you know you can, you're confident making a certain switch into something because you know it can take it and you can maneuver your board positions around a bit better. That's all I'm trying to get at. But we'll not drag it on anymore. Maybe we'll do a, um, a tutorial episode on something like that. Um, down the line when I've got a bit more time to get these things out because we've got so much to do. I know I've still got to do that team review episode on the Lele Blim team and I will get that done guys as soon as possible. I'm just stacked up with stuff at the moment. Um, but we will get there eventually, won't we? We've got the summer coming up and there's a lot more time during that. So hopefully when that rolls around, we'll get loads more stuff out and we can try and do other things. So. We'll see what happens. But I am going to leave it there tonight, guys. This is going to be the last School of Hard Knocks episode for this week. Because on Friday, we're going to have our 100th episode. And it's going to be live streamed on Friday on the channel at 8 o'clock UK time. So if you're around, do come and join me. Stick around. Probably be an hour, an hour and a half stream. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to have a huge competition. I'm going to try and organise some like cool stuff to do. We'll probably play a bit of Battle Spot, but we'll, uh, we'll just see what happens during the stream. We can do anything. Um, all limits are off. It will be School of Hard Knocks though. So we might just stick to VGC um, and keep other things for other, other times. But um, do stick around for that, guys. We'll be back later on with an episode of our QR code series. So do stick around for that. It is a very good team. Um, so I, I think you guys will like it. So do check that out later on. We'll be back tomorrow with an episode of our Battle Spot Double Series. So do keep the suggestions coming in. Like I say, next week is going to be the last week we're going to be using those QR code teams. And we're going to do next, not this weekend, the following weekend, we're going to do a team building episode on the Saturday and the Sunday and then go on to the, the Battle Spot Doubles series with our new team and see how we get on so that'll be a lot of fun so we do need a few suggestions for next week's episodes um i've got one lined up for tomorrow um so just next week that's all we need guys get them in and keep the suggestion coming in for the qr code series because we're constantly needing those um but yeah we'll we'll end things up i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please leave a like on the video it does help the channel out massively if you're new to the channel, welcome and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of the daily content that we have coming out for you. School of Hard Knocks, Basketball Doubles, QR Code Series, NBL, Season 2 and all that shebang. So guys, I'm going to end that up there. I will speak to you again later on today, but I will be back tomorrow with a Battle Spot Doubles episode. So whatever you're doing, guys, take care of yourselves. Make sure you're having a great time, whatever you're doing, and I will see you later. So until then, bye-bye.